се са доста звездан сърцето, тъй като са ни клинични заобилка за болезни за отворя на гробовски клиники под тем доктор Милица Григорис Крамбедев, она е водя центра за когнитивне мотне, професор доктор Бен Винблад водя и адеси, водя центра за разискование, аз хаймерове болезни на Каролински институтов на Свеска, им са доктор Катерина Барбара Струкас, психиатриня, психиатрична клиника, водя е носен за веронто психиатрия. Зели па е предала кафе до кар професори Петро. Да, Сриди се вам не при лепо захвалу, да се се отвали нашему повабилу на данку в Словении, то се смо весели и да тори зло помимне ка догодка и си цер тега да се е европски конзорци за пасинство за Альцхаймерево болезен збрал да бо наредил ен план за своје активности за напреј. Тоа е сега туди приложно за едно само рефлексио ке ин како смо у Словенији за обравнаво те прихајајоче се епидемије 21-тега столетја. Јас бом кратек, имамо зелу помембне гостје, ки нам бодо велико лахко тори поведал. Сам би рад подал бол своје неко виденје обравнаве тега področја у Словенији in sicer ki ga nekak da zaznavam kot med bliščem pa med bedo, s tem da bom končal pa tudi zelo dobro novico. Kaj je blišč obravnave demence in podobnih stan v Sloveniji? Zanesljivo je to, da imamo kar nekaj zelo motiviranih ljudi, ki delajo na tem področju, in to tako na zdravstvenem, kakor tudi na socialnem področju, tako stroponjakov, kakor tudi civilnih združenj in prostovoljcev. Imamo izjemno lepo organizirano društvo bojnikov, ki se imenuje Spominčica, in katerega velik uspeh je, da bo letos, preprav tako v Ljubljano, pripeljalo letni kongres oziroma letno srečenje združen bojnikov z Alzheimerjevo demenco celotne Evrope, to bo v septembru. Gotovo, da je blišč našega stanja to, da smo v zadnjih letih odlično upeti v mednarodno dogajanje, prav današnji in jutrišnji dogodek, torej srečanje, letno srečanje EA, DC nam je najlepši dokaz za to. Poleg tega, se pravzaprav, je Slovenija v naslednjih dveh letih tista evropska država, kjer se bo največ dogajalo od vseh evropskih držav na področju demence. Čaka nas, kot sem rekel, septembra srečanje vseh združen bojnikov za Alzheimerjevo demenco, Alzheimer Evropa se imenuje, to bo v septembru. Na to mesec ali skoraj dva kasneje imamo mednarodno konferenco o vaskularni demenci in potem za naslednje leto tudi mednarodno konferenco o nemotoričnih izvitih Parkinsonove bolezni, tudi o demenci v okrivo Parkinsonove bolezni in tega leta bo Ljubljana gostila tudi gonovske smere za podobno temo. Poleg tega moram pripraviti, da Slovenija zelo sistematično pošilja svoje strokovnjake na izobraževanje v Slovino, ravno kar se je iz Stokholma vrnila dr. Stori Kramberkereva in že v septembru bomo poslali na Karolinsko novega strokovnjaka. Kot veste in ste tudi sami že poročali, je Slovenija prijemnik sredstev v prvi stopni tako imenovanega projekta CIMI, to je evropski projekt v okviru obzori 20, torej 20, kjer je bilo v Sloveniji skupaj z Karolinsko dodeljeno pol milijona 
evro za to, da naredi načrt in plan, kako v naslednjih 4, 5, 6 letih izboljšati obravnavo na področju neurodegenerativnih bolezni mozdanov tudi tudi demence. To je za nas velik preuspeh, ki smo si ga izborili za zelo trdi mednarodni konkurenci in upam, da bomo tudi z tem načrtom uspeli in se bi potem nas čaka kar nekaj deset milijonov evrov, ki jih bomo lahko uložili v boljšo obravnavo bolnikov za neurodegenerativno boleznjo. Naj se pohvalim še z enim uspehom. Slovenija je bila uspešna tudi pri pridobitvi tako imenovanih norveških sredstev in sicer za uspostavitev prvega poskusnega centra, pominskega centra, ki bo v celju in bo primer pravzaprav zelo lepe, da so dolovanja socialne sfere z zdravstveno in velik podarek bo pravzaprav na upetosti lokalnih prebivalcev na to, da bomo živeli nekoč v okolju, ki je prijazno do zemljenčnega človeka. Prav na medicinski fakulteti se lahko pohvalimo s tem, da imamo enega izmed najbolj dovršenih in dorečenih načinov učenja za demenco. Študente imajo možnosti kar en teden pravzaprav preživeti za bojniki za demenco, videti umetniška dela na temo demence in spoznati to bolezen kot je mnogo zelo različnih vidikov. No, obenem pa pravzaprav imamo še drugo plat te naše realnosti, ki sem jo poimenoval pa manj bleščeko. In sicer imamo za Evropo osupljivo pomankanje mreže centrov ali ambulant ali nekih točk, kjer bi bojniki za demenco in za njihovi skrbniki lahko dobili pomoč. Imamo izjemno kadrovsko pomankanje, o tem vam bo vse več pregovoril tako doktor Štrukljeva predstojnica, ki jim se to desa za psihijatrijo na polju, kakor tudi doktor Stramberg Greva, ki je vodja centra za kognitivne moče na Univerzitnem kliničnem centru v Ljubljanu. To izjemno kadrovsko pomankanje je tako na področju zdravstva, tako tudi na področju socijale. Posebej nas v Sloveniji seveda tepe dejstvo, da nimamo geriatrije. V mnogih državah imajo geriatrijo kot stroko, ki se posebej zauzeto in lepo ukvarja z boleznimi starih ljudi. Pravi, zato v Sloveniji tem večje breme obravnave teh bolnikov vpade na splošne zdravnike, na psihijatre in na nevrologe. Naj pa končam pravzaprav med tem bliskem in bedo zelo zelo dobro prenovitvo, ki lahko, mislim, da imam ta prilegi, da jo prvi, lahko že le sporočim, da smo skupaj z Ministrstvom za zdravje pravzaprav v zelo zaključni fazi tako imenovanega nacionalnega plana za demenco, ki je zdaj tist predjavno prerazpravo in ki bo na en celovit način poskušal zaokrožiti to neko grozečo epidemijo 21. stoletja in naš odgovor na njo. Jaz se to zahvaljujem za to prilože. Torej, profesor Žovjeno in ministrstvo, že bom rada pogledala, da je ministrica za zdravje, Milojka Kolar-Kolarc, poslala poslanico temu strokovnemu sretanju Sicer jo veseli, da so doseženi takšni uspeti na tem področju zdravljenja, razlikovanja in diagnostike in želi v tem udeleženju tem sretanja in pozdravlja tudi vas, seveda uspešno delo. Zdaj bi pa predala besedo dr. Milice Gregorij Stramberger, vodi Centra za poznitevne motnje na kličnem oddelku za bolezni delitelja. 
Hvala še hvala za besedo, zelo me veseli, da ste se odzvali našemu zabilo in tudi jaz moram povedati, če prav je bilo že povedano, da je potem izjemno vesela, da imamo ta privilegij, ki ga imamo danes in tudi jutri, da v Sloveniji lahko gostimo tako srečanje, ki se nam obeta danes, ki je srečanje v Evropske v konzorske, da je vsem rebo bolezen, naš centr za kognitivne motnje in smirološke klinike, je v zadnjih dveh letih plan tega, tega konzorcija, kar pomeni, da se trudimo po naših načih aktivno vključovati v njihove dejavnosti, v njihove projekte. To nam do neke mere že dobro uspeva. Sicer pa bi jaz vam sporočila, kako je naš centr za kognitivne motnje na Nerologski klinici, ki je nažalost v smere edini tako usmerjen centr v naši državi na neurologiji, ki se ukvarja z boliti z vdemenco, preživel oziroma se razvil v zadnjih vseh letih, kar obstaja. Izhodišče kadrov se nažalost obstaja še zmeraj enako. Zavod za zdravstveno zavarovanje na njeno začetku namenil sredstva za to, da imamo formalno enega neurologa, enega psikologa in eno diplomirano medicinsko sestro zaposlene na ta namen. Vendar z srečo in z izjemno pripravljenostjo in požrtovalnostjo kolegov, ki se ukvarjajo z drugimi vejami neurologije, predvsem neurodegenerativno, neurodegenerativnim področjem, kot so motni gibanja, kolegi zelo prijazno vse čas sodelujejo v tej ambulanci, ki poteka dnevno, torej vsak dan poteka ambulanca za kognitiv namotno na neurološki kliniki in v tem času smo ob tem, ko smo iskali tudi dobre vzore, skalice organizacije, kako naj takšna ambulanca deluje in tudi z izobraževanjem uspeli doseči to, da bolnik, ki je napoten v našo ambulanco, ali od splošnih zdravnikov, ali od kolegov neurologov, ali od psihijatrov ali drugih, nekako mu omogočimo takemu bolniku eno tako sistematično obravnavo, kjer se poskutimo tako njegovi, seveda, pripovedi, njegovi zgodbi, naredimo natančno oceno skalica imenovanih presejalnih testov, potem ga naputimo na preiskave, tako laboratorijske kot druge, ki na katere bi lahko bil napoten tudi v katerikoli drugi evropski državi. Seveda pa nalepimo na problem, ker naši bolniki v tem procesu diagnostične obravnave veliko dlje časa čakajo na to, da so na vrsti zateločen napisanja, ali pregled s psikologu ali druge stvari. Pa vendar mislim oziroma vem, da smo v teh sestih letih s takim načinom uspeli ustvariti neko osnovo. Predobili smo neke osnovne podatke, ki bomo jih lahko seveda za analizo pregledali in na osnovi tega naredili tudi nasrt, kako bi lahko zboljšali našo obravnavo. In seveda upamo, da bomo s tem, ko bo nacionalni nasrt za demenco v državi sprejet, da bodo tudi strani kadrovskih vprašanj postavljene možnosti, ki nam bodo omogočili, da bomo lahko bolnikom oziroma napoteni za našo ambulanco dali bolj promptno, se pravi bolj skrajšeno in učinkovito obravnavo in potem napotke tako za njih kot za svojce, pa so tudi za druge vpletene v obravnavo v bolnico v zemenci, se pravi mi se zelo dobro zavedamo, da neurologija je samo en en ena postaja oziroma en del 
zdravstva, ki se lahko ukvarja z bolnicom za demenco. Vemo, da je zelo pomembno sodelovanje tudi psihiatrije, zato imamo tudi v našem timu dva kolega psihiatri, ki nam enkrat na teden pomaga ta s konzultacijami. Nekakor pa to ni dovolj, tako da mislim, da sodelovanje s psihiatrije v naši strani je zelo zaželjeno in upamo, da bomo tudi sodelovanje bolj izgradili. Kakorkoli jaz mislim, da se v teh šestih letih tako z našim povezovanjem izven države, tako s postavljanjem sistema oziroma sistematične obravnave teh bolnikov, zgodil velik spremik in upamo samo, da bo s takim ali morda še boljšim tempom se stanje nadaljevalo. Odkrat smo začeli, smo uspeli organizirati že tudi nekaj izobraževanj za naše kolege, ki smo jih imenovali kognitivni dan in jutri bo četrti kognitivni dan, se pravi četrto leto za pored in ta kognitivni dan se bo letos usmeril predvsem na značilnosti Alzheimerove demence in kolegi iz Evropskega konzorcija bodo prijazni sodelovali so s vami predavanji, tako da bo srečanje iz veliko vidikov še bolj zanimivo ravno letos, ko imamo to posebno priložnost. To je pravzaprav vse, kar bi je želela srečiti. Hvala lepa. Naš gost iz Svetske, prof. Vindlas, dr. Jame, da bo na tudi sveti že desetih letih prišlo do velikih spremenj v preterapijah, te bolezni in da bodo še bolj osinkovite. Prof. Vindlas, bolj tudi još. So your views uh, on the issues on new treatments, uh, a general message to them, yeah, the other ABC, and uh, about new treatments. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think we are facing a very optimistic time period regarding possible treatments of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, there are actually two approaches. One is are there possibilities to prevent, I mean, affecting lifestyle factors like uh, the type of living, activities, stimulation, control of, of risk factors like high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, um, cholesterol levels, etc. Uh, the other approach where I'm more uh, happy to take part, that, that's to develop new pharmaceutical therapy uh, and, and uh, my focus on the last 10 years since I went back a bit from the clinical work is, is really to, to translate research from the basic research out into the clinic and, and perform clinical trials. Uh, and I mentioned uh, when Preston and I spoke before that, that um, we now see pharmaceutical approaches that are seem to be more promising than before. We should remember that we have seen many failures, many negative trials. Uh, the last drug approved on the indication of Alzheimer's disease was in 2002 when the German uh, company Firma Merz in Frankfurt uh, got approved their memantin on the indication of more advanced stages of Alzheimer's disease, moderate and severe stages of the disease. Uh, now, we were on a conference like two, three weeks ago in Nice. We heard that a vaccination program, an immunotherapy program, where they give antibodies to the patient, and the antibodies are directed towards the beta amyloid, which is actually the classical hallmark that Alois Alzheimer described in 1906. I mean, these beta amyloid aggregates in the brain and forms these phenyl clots. And Alzheimer then also reported 
neurofibrillar tangles that, that some, something called tau, uh, tau uh, aggregates inside the nerve cells. So, so it hinders the transport of the neurotransmitters down to the synapses. So the contact between the nerve cells is inhibited. Uh, the, this report was on beta amyloids and, and uh, it was a small study reported by a company from Boston uh, by Dean Isaac. And they had 166 patients and they had given <coughs> vaccination or in antibodies injected intravenously <coughs> every month for 18 months. And, and uh, uh, depending on the dosage they gave, they saw a dose dependent effect on, on cognitive function. I mean, we can measure, I suppose, first time I made a talked about PEP, we, we talked about minimensis PEP, MMSC for they could improve the minimensis PEP score by giving for the better effect with the highest dose doses than with the lowest dose doses. Of course this was an early stage trial and we now move to phase three trials um, and then that's necessary for, for approval of, of the treatment in the European authorities. Uh, we also have one approach with active vaccination against tau, the other hallmark of the disease, and that's developed by a uh, uh, Bratislava company, uh, 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 Axon Pharmaceuticals, uh, actually based on very basic research in Bratislava since 30 years. Uh, that uh, drug discovery takes a very long time. We have to persevere. We have to give them time. People have to understand that. And, and that is now moving from phase one into phase two, starting in Austria and, and uh, before the summer. And, and uh, Ljubljana will also be part of that uh, trial starting in the fall. I don't know which are part of the of the, of the buy-in. No. No, no. So, so, so it's, 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 I, I think it's a good possibility for Europe and it's a good possibility for Slovenia uh, as you have here a center or two centers <laughs> kind of kind of where, where you can recruit patients and, and, and uh, um, part of that is also stimulated via this European Alzheimer's Disease Consortium that I'm leading. Um, where we have a meeting this afternoon and tomorrow morning. We have um, 65 of the leading European centers in this consortium. And, and uh, one goal is to stimulate collaboration with industry to attract the centers, to attract companies coming here doing trials. But the other goal is now to set up a, a, a to say, call it a minimal data set for all 65 centers. We will assess the patients in the same way. And then we will very quickly have a big database in Europe. And we, we can also take, which is tradition, both here and in our countries, Scandinavian countries, to take cerebral spinal fluid. We have the possibility to do the post emission tomography, looking on amyloids. And with that, we can we have an enormous database and better understand certainly um, how we should uh, direct future treatment strategies. We can also be very attractive for industrial collaboration. So Minister spent six months with me now in Stockholm and worked on, on, on this um, um, minimal data set. So we'll present that uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow morning. And, and uh, how that should be in Europe. And then <coughs> you put in the data, everything goes to a centralized storage, computer storage, you could say. And then we can also see what centers have to assess, what centers have other assessments. Uh, I think by that we increase the readiness to collaborate with pharma, we increase the European collaboration. And uh, Slovenia has really played a big role in this by doing cerebral spinal fluid. We have also another project where, um, from you, is, is Uros Rock, is uh, the leading of that. Uh, that's only 
is a dukkha, we say what time is do it, and dukkha biomarker. Because we cannot take a biopsy, but we can, we can mirror what is happening in, in the cerebral sinus fluid. And so what we have done is to standardize the, how to take the cerebral sinus fluid, what test tubes we should have, how extensively, uh, what, how we should do the assessment of, of content in the CSF, and how we should educate now, let's say, whole Slovenia, how to do this. Put an educational program uh, in place in the coming year. This program ends now uh, in uh, end of June, uh, but now it, it, we are in the phase of education to do it. Similar in Maribor as we do it here or in other centers. So that, that's the two programs I'm leading. <coughs> Și la cum ne zim în craft, poziția stiga care ne zice profesor Vindla, producem vedem a tot de zad, nici mica lecu, practic, nu e bilo novic zdravil za demenso in celo na sprop, nu mi vidimo pravzaprav unik farmacije iz raziskovanja tega področja na bolj atraktivna premesta, sad ca ove bica demenso ni zelo atraktivn, a ne? Je vendar le profesor Vinzat podal en optimistični pogled na to, kako vidi zelo ne vsakeno bližnjo bodočnost, a ne, optimistični pogled tako z stališča, kaj lahko naredimo za motno spominja in tukaj je izvzel pravzaprav dva vidika. En je vidik raziskal stila življenja, kako živet, kako se gibat, kaj je in podobno, a ne, kjer nam pravzaprav tisti faktori tveganja, ki so pomembni za kardiovaskularne bolesti, lahko pomagajo tudi pri prekrepitvi demence. Poleg stila življenja je pa pravzaprav njegov interes in velik del dela tudi tega konzorcija na uvedbi novih farmakoloških zdravil. Tukaj iz postavo predvsem dvoje zelo uznemerljivih področji, kjer ima veliko vlogo tudi Ljubljana in sicer to je cepljenje, namreč v tri demenci, se bomo žganih odlagali ene slabe beljakovine, ki jih lahko potem odstranimo bodi z izrecepljenjem ali pa ali pa da damo neuroimunološka zdravila. Samo na področju prečepljenja, tako imenovanega aktivnega cepljenja, bo tukaj sodelovala v naslednjih letih tudi Ljubljana. No, poleg tega je pa seveda pomenil, da za ta nova zdravljenja, ki se nam obletajo, je pa zelo pomembna natančna diagnoza in zato je zelo pomembno torej testirati in pa izvesti diagnostične teste na vsakemu od bolnikov samo po sebi vzamemo za normalno, da testiramo nekoga, ki ima probleme s srcem ali televizijami, enako bi moralo biti za probleme z spominami. No, v drugem delu svojega odgovora je pa spregovoril o tem Združenju EAZC, to je eno Združenje, kjer je zbrano 65 vodilnih evropskih centrov za raziskave na področju Alzheimerjeve bolezni, predvsem z namenom, da se s sodelovanjem bazičnih in pa kliničnih raziskal uspodbudi najdba novih zdravil in novih pristopov za obravnavo Alzheimerjeve bolezni. No in poleg teh raziskal, katere molekule bi lahko in kateri načini bi lahko pomagali pri odpravi teh slabih beljakovin iz možgame, je pa podaro tudi to, kako pomembno je, da vsi evropski centri med seboj izmenjujemo in tudi standardiziramo podatke testiran. In tudi tukaj ima Ljubljana v evropskem okviru en zelo pomembno mesto, predvsem 
Kozi laboratori dr. Uroša Rota, ki dela veliko na likvorju in skozi delo dr. Kramberger je v v Stockholmu, ki ga bodo sedaj natalevali nove generacije zdravnikov. Tako da to zato je kot in končal svoje razmišljanje tudi o tudi z vodniko na tako pozitivno in optimistično oceno sodelovanja Slovenije v pri obravnavi Alzheimer in raziskovanju Alzheimer v bolesni v naslednjih letih. Hvala Liza. Pri znanju in tudi z psihiatrinja dr. Katerina Barbara Struka, ki me bo predstavila delovanje enote z advirom to psihiatrijo na psihiatrijo in tudi na zdravljanju. I understand to my friends. Yes. Okay. Just I will whisper in my ear. Okay. 
could you could you just explain uh, what were what were the results of those um, preliminary tests for this um, vaccination? Um, how much of this cognitive function was actually the result of that vaccination? Uh, we, we have had, um, I would say, three or four trials larger with immunotherapy giving antibodies. Um, this was the first one that gave a more optimistic view. And the reason could be that the antibodies. And probably they have antibodies that target the right, we call it epitopes of, of the A-beta molecule. Uh, the clinical observations are a, a phase one or early phase two study is mostly for safety. I mean, we have to convince ourselves that this is a safe drug. So they look mostly that we don't have negative effects. And, and, and the outcomes, the clinical outcomes were here a uh, uh, cognitive score, we call it a composed cognitive score on, on, on um, I would say memory is important, but also speed, language, executive functions, all what you do. And they had one, what we call then a composite score on cognition, and they ha had this minimum test score. And, and the, the effect is, was significant compared with the placebo group, that the placebo patients who got no antibodies injected, they, they declined. But those that were having these antibodies in these three different or four different dose injections, they were stable. They, they didn't really improve, but they were arresting the decline, you could say. So the difference between these two groups was significant. And, and, and the effect was, it's difficult to say on what cognitive function it was. It, but it was on the total score, we could say. And, and then comes the question, is this clinically relevant? And, and uh, I assume that if you can arrest the disease, it's absolutely for patients and for the spouses and caregivers, clinically relevant. Uh, we, we have seen other trials before that were promising, but when they came to the large trials with 2,000 patients over two years, long studies, then the results have not been positive. So, so we have to look both on the effect side and we have also to look on the side effects that we don't get too many side effects. And the side effects they got in this, this patient was that they have, because when the amyloid is taken out of the brain, it has to be taken out via the vessels. And then the amyloid assembles in the vessel wall and then it, it <coughs> hurts or deranges the vessel wall, so you see an edema around the vessel. We call it a, a, a typical side effect of taking away out and out of the brain. So the, and this edema is something we in the clinic are afraid of. Patients could, so we usually stop the treatment. And in, in the highest dosage, and patients who have a genetic this gene, such as stability gene, APOE4, hyperlipoprotein E4, then we saw more of these side effects. So now they, in the phase three, we go with the second highest dosage, and they will have very much control over the genetic status of the patient. So also genetic influence side effects increases results. Če lahko prevedem, a ne vprašanje kolegice je bilo, ali to obetajoče zdravljenje z cepenjem za antitelesi, kaj je pravzaprav nam prinese, kaj izboljša. Zdaj odgovor profesor Vim Vlada je bil, da zdaj po treh ali štirih študijah je pravzaprav nekih obetajočih rezultatov, niti ni bilo je to prva študija, ki pa nam je dala ene obetajoče, razlage oziroma rezultate, a ne, cepili so skupino vojnikov z tremi naraščajočimi odmerki teh antiteles, a ne, in so gledali, kako se izboljša nekaj, kar se ne celokupna 
kognitivna funkcija se prav to je zbir kakšne pozornosti, spomina in več iz teh kognitivnih tri funkcije. In študija je dala pravzaprav zelo jasno razliko med tistimi, ki so dobili placebo, se pravi neaktivno substanco in tistimi, ki so dobili antitelesa. Medtem, ko je pri tisti, ki so dobili placebo, boleze neusiljeno napredovala, pa je pri tisti, ki so dobili antitelesa, se bolezen stabilizirala. Ni prišlo do dramatičnega izboljšanja, se je pa zaustavilo in to je nekaj, kar tako kliniki, kakor bolnični skrbniki so smatrali za vredno in za klinično relevantno. Profesor Vindat je seveda opozoril na to, da gre pri takšnih študija vse čas za ravnotežje med izboljšanjem in pa med stranskimi učinki in tudi to zdravljenje z antitelesi ni brez stranskih učinkov. Ko z antitelesi potegnemo te slabe beljakovine iz možganov, a ne tesno di gredo preko možganskih žil in zaradi tega se pri nekaterih, zlasti pri eni skupini bojnikov, ki imajo slabi gen, se lahko potem pride do spremenj okolji žil in tega se bojimo, tako da gre za čas zaradi tebe med dobrimi in slabimi učinci. If I compare this um, study from the Boston Bay Fireman Company and the one from Bratislava, Bratislava is an active vaccination. That means that, that uh, we inject part of the tau molecule into the patient, and the patient themselves produce the antibody. Uh, in this virus, uh, we inject uh, antibodies that were so to say, humanized or human antibodies, but produced outside the patient. So we had to inject life from every month for the rest of the life. With the active approach, we can inject like four, five, six times, and then the immune system themselves produces the antibodies. So, so, so that's a more risky way, but it, it's from an economic point of view, from a, for our society, a more cost-effective probably treatment. So we have passive and active. And, and uh, passive is the most commonly used because you can, if you see side effects, you can stop treatment. If you're active, you cannot stop it. And the side effects exist with both treatments? The side effects, it, uh, I would say the most of these vascular side effects we have seen is a passive approach. Really first active approach we, we <coughs> saw um, side effects that were very dangerous because we got a, an inflammation in the brain and in the what you call meninges, what's the Slovenian word for meninges? Meninges. Meninges, yeah. And even some patients died at that time from this, from this uh, inflammation. So, so, so I mean, it's a high-risk project, but it, it, it's uh, a patient group where, where you, yeah, patients are ready to take risks. I mean, when we were leading these uh, active ex first active vaccination studies, we had, uh, in one day, the first day we had published it in Lancet Neurology, I had 2,000 mails, and people said we are ready to move to Sweden if we just are members of this study. And, and I said, we, 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 we cannot take this, or we, we have to take patients due to safety reasons from the na neighborhood to surrounding. So, I mean, sometimes in these phase one studies, you can probably only take patients from Ljubljana and not from the whole of Slovenia because the side effects would happen. So, so we, we are ready for that in phase one. When we come to phase three, we have already investigated that Se na kratko pozamem, pri profesor je nam na zanimivo vprašanje odgovoril, da seveda so bile že prej študije z cepljeni, vendar da ta študija, ki jo zdaj zaklinjamo v Evropi, se razlikuje od prejšnje, recimo ene zelo znane iz Bostona, potem, da je 
v Borsku bilo cepljenje tako zelo pasivno, torej cepljenje medtem, ko v Evropi vse pričenjamo z aktivnim cepivom, kaj je razlika pri pasivnem cepljenju, mi bolniku ubrizamo antitelesa in ta antitelesa on potem prejema celo življenje, to seveda iz ekonomskega in drugih razlogov zna biti predvsem obremenjoče za družbo. No, to, kar pa se zdaj v Evropi dogaja in kar in kjer bo sodelovala tudi Ljubljana, je pa aktivno cepljenje, kar pomeni, da človeku ubrizga model slabe veljakovine nekaj krat, vendar seveda v manjših odmirkih in pravzaprav potem telo samo začne producirati antitelesa. Seveda tako pri eni, pa kot pri drugi lahko pride do stranskih učinkov, lahko pride do gnetja v mozanih, v ovojnicah in je zato pravzaprav potreben en zelo nastančen in etičen raziskovalni načrt. Profesor Bindlak je predvsem zanimivo stvar, da ko je prvič objavil take rezultate, kaj se dogaja, ko se bolnika zemenstva aktivno precepi v enem zelo uglednem časopisu Lens Neurology, da je potem tako dobil kar okrog tisoč mailov iz celega sveta, kjer so bolniki in skrbniki izrazali željo, da pridejo na Švedsko, da naredijo to proceduro, ampak seveda iz etičnih razlogov se lahko delale na dobro definirani izbrani skupini, tako da tudi še in ko bo prišlo do tega v Ljubljani, seveda bo velik podarek na skrbnem utemljenem izboru teh bolnikov. Kdo pravzaprav pride v poštev, ali to ljudje z napredovalo že to bolezni, a na začetku? Zacepljenje. Zacepljenje. To je vsem vse v ekstra vaccination. Who would be a good candidate? Is it the patient with the early phase of the disease or late phase of the disease? So far, treatment has only been tested in, in mild patients, or, or uh, I would even say in MCI patients now. So the, this uh, study from uh, reported in NIS, uh, but it was in mild and prodromal, we could say, where you have positive biomarkers. The strength, I said it was a small study, 156 patients, but all had a positive amyloid positron emission tomography, so they know that these patients had positive amyloid in the brain, or positive or negative. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but, uh, but I, I think um, earlier I really liked to work with more severe stages because I had responsibility over the nursing homes in Stockholm for, for these patients. And, and uh, so we did a lot of studies. No, nowadays, the nursing homes have come out in the community, and so it's more the GPs who have responsibility. So I've not had really the possibility to do trials in more severe stages. And, uh, and, and um, the question about if, if whether it would be better in early or in more advanced stages is, is untested. But, but I assume that, that the pathology is starting very early. The pathology comes many years before you have symptoms. So you should probably start as early as possible with this vaccination. Odgovor, a ne, je, da ta študija za aktivnim cepljenjem, ki je bila lani predstavljena prvič v Nisi, je zajemala 166 bolnikov, ki so bili v zelo zgodni fazi, torej demence ali celo v čistem stadiju, ko bolnik še nima pravzaprav zelo izrazitih kliničnih znakov za predemenco, ko slikanje, tako je zelo pet, slikanje že pokaže, da imamo spremenjene moždane, vendar klinično je še človek dobro, relativno dobro funkcionira.
iz nas, iz delovanja naše ambulante je vidno oziroma lahko povem, da na začetku teh šestih let povem na potičo v našo ambulanto praktično samo ljudje za demenco. Za zelo očitno demenco, torej z vrednimi fazami ali tudi kuba demenco, medtem, ko se je v zadnjih dveh, treh letih, ko se na podičo spremenila, in so ljudje ljudje na potemi imajo še demence, zato je tako imenovano blago kognitivno močnjo, kjer človek sam pri sebi čuti, da nekaj več ni tako, kot je bilo, se pravi, da ne funkcionira več ali prej se bi se spomina z drugih teh vizih funkcij, tako kot je prej, pa vendar se zmore vse dnevne aktivnosti tako, da pravzaprav lahko funkcionira dobro v dnevu in mogoče svoje tega niti ne opazijo ali pa opazijo, da rečejo, da je to ni velika tezava. In to je tista populacija, na katero je smiselno po vseh teh razstavah in čim več pozornosti nameniti, ker to so tisti, ki bi jim lahko verjetno najbolj pomagali, ki bi znali med njimi izbrati, identificirati tiste, ki bodo verjetno napredovali v demenco in tisti, ki ne bodo, ker vsi, ki imajo oblast zvuknitiv na motnjo, ne postanejo demenci. Na kateri in se stanje se lahko zboljša, če gre pravzaprav za takšno stanje, ki samo spominja na, torej, ki samo se odraza kot blaga kognitiv na motnjo, pa je mogoče razpoloženska tezava, je mogoče depresija ali še na drugo. Tako da v zadnjih letih so se na potičo spremenile, verjetno tudi v osebni, torej v sploštni zvoniki se na nekaj sin odločajo, pa po premisli, ko več ljudi pošiljajo bolj demenčnih med psihiatrijo, manj med neurologom, kar se zdi seveda zelo smiselno, ker so psihiatri za bolj napredovale bolezni, seveda bolj napredovalo demenco zaradi pridruženih težav bolj spremenjeni. Mogoče še na kratko bi se vseeno vrnila k tej aktivni in pasivnemu cepljenju. Znano je, da je na področju onkologije nekak svetovni okrem te spodbojne zdravljenja s pomočjo imunologije. Ali je to pomeni, da bi lahko tudi za to področje zdravljenja teh neuroloških bolezni pravzaprav združili to svetovno znanje pri raziskovanju imunologije, da bi tudi tu bil nekak napredek dosežen, to je eno vprašanje, tako da bi nakratko to razliko med to povedali, in pa ali pričakujete, da se bodo, pravzaprav s tem, da je za raziskovanje tih cepiv ukvarjali bolj ti proizvajalci, ki sicer raziskujejo nova cepiva, če so se ostale farmaceutske firme nekako umaknile, ker verjetno zaradi teh mozdanskih barjer, pa to, ko ostala različna zdravila niso bila vsetna. Two questions for Ms. Bosniak. Now, if you notice that this field of vaccination is very dynamic in the field of oncology as well, and whether the field, and her question is whether the field of Alzheimer's disease somehow cooperate or get uh, some experiences uh, or information also from the oncology field. And then uh, she, uh, starting from the point of view that pharmaceutical companies actually are receiving, they are, they are leading the field of uh, uh, cognitive, um, of uh, cognition, uh, whether, who will be uh, the main provider of uh, uh, research on the field of vaccinations. Would that be new companies which do the vaccination who are oriented on vaccination or will the classical pharmaceutical companies go to the vaccination field? So oncology and then the providers of this vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. Regarding the last question, I think that that's a real European problem. Sweden has lost, lost AstraZeneca they closed down in Stockholm or Solitaria. Uh, we have seen the same in Britain closing. Germany has no pharmaceutical company doing Alzheimer's research. We have companies in Copenhagen, Lundbeck, we have in Basel, uh, Roche and Novartis still in the field. So my, 
my thought is that uh, the pharmaceutical industry is in some way changing their way of working. And uh, I think we, in the, let's say, psychiatry, geriatrics, and neurology, have to take much more responsibility for the basic research. And, and your government and our government has to see this. You have Kurka in here. They are mainly focusing on generics. But I can also see that some of the generics company are doing rather good money. And then they start to try to develop their own research and new drug development. So that's a small hope for me. I can see that happens, for example, with the Israel company Teva, that is an enormous big generic company. They bought the German rod, rod um, the, So my, my, how I would do this would be that, that I, I'm trying to get the government in Europe to put money, and Svetlan is working hard in the joint programming to, to do the same, that we want the Europe to put money for the academics to come closer together. We should have the preclinical and the clinical work being much more linked together so we have a quick translation. And perhaps we can have experts in pharmacology linked to this. And that would create some new drug discovery units. But, but I think our governments have to take responsibility and put more money into this research and assessing with preclinical drug discovery people and clinical working together. So perhaps in neurology or psychiatry here, they could put in basic researchers in, in, into the academic group, put some people from Kurka in that, and they could work in four walls <coughs> uh, to do it much quicker than the traditional old-fashioned pharmaceutical companies have done. Uh, oncology is, is um, certainly far ahead of our research. Oncology started with, I mean, you can do uh, operate away the tumor, then you had irradiation coming in, then you had cytostatics coming in, then you had hormone therapy, then you had genetic-oriented therapy. Uh, we have seen the first generation of drugs in the Alzheimer's disease. Now we start to combine these treatments. We combine the cholinergic drugs with the glutamatergic drugs. We are now coming with immunotherapy, we are coming with um, gene therapy, stem cells, ideas about this. So uh, we have a lot to learn from oncology. That, that's my feeling. And, and I think we are looking on them and we are trying to invite specialists from, from that field on our meeting, so especially from cardiovascular is also also have our far ahead in treatment strategies. Uh, and I think that's the way for uh, Professor Winkler je prišel z odgovoru na uh, drugo vprašanje uh, in tu, uh, ki, ki je zadevalo to nekoliko depresivno stanje umika velikih farmaceutskih uh, podjetij iz področja Alzheimerjeve uh, demence in Morten uh, spomina. Uh, to je res, a ne pravi sami žalostni, torej zaradi tega, kako smo tudi vsi za teh klasičnih farmaceutskih firm, Lepo spominjen star človek, ne, zanima tako zelo. Vidi pa uh, rešitev v tem, da pravzaprav se v nekem okolju, in tukaj nam je dal konkretno okolje Slovenije, uh, naredi dvoje. Prvo je to, da bazični raziskovalci sami postanejo nekoliko bolj uh, glasni, da jih bolj uh, čujemo, da se bolj uh, predstavijo in da se na to povezajo z lokalnimi farmaceutskimi podjetji z njihovimi raziskovalnimi odelci, sam je recimo omenil tukaj naše podjetje Krko, se pravi, da ena rešitev bi bila to, da bi bazični eh, eh, veliko raziskovalci naredil eh, nek preboj, se povezal eh, z raziskovalnimi podjetji večjih podjetji in od tukaj delal eh, naprej. No, predvsem pa vidi eh, rešitev v tem, da če se za farmaceutska podjetja iz svojih komercijalnih eh, razlogov umikajo, da pa je pravzaprav pr- pr- potem odgovornost vlad po celi Evropi, a ne, eh, vsake vlade, da pravzaprav pr- naredi njih nacrt, 
da se morajo tudi te manj atraktivne ali manj, uh, skratka, uh, finančno obetajoče študije uh, predela, da prav mora biti tudi politična uh, odločitev in ena izmed takih političnih odločitev, v kateri je Slovenija uh, zelo aktivna, se jo je omenil profesor Vilda, ki je tako imenovani JPND, to pomeni Joint Programming for Neurodependence of Diseases, v okviru Evropske eh, komisije, oziroma nekorih raziskovalnih eh, programov, imamo eh, tako telo, ob, v katerem sedijo tako predstavniki stroke, kako tudi predstavniki ministrstva za zdaj in to odločajo, kam bo šel zelar in zakaj. Drugo vprašanje, ki je za onkologijo, eh, profesor Vindla pogotavlja, da se seveda kot je preko je gospa Bošnjakova sama ugotovila, da so onkologi daleč pred nami, kar se tiče števila zdravil, ki so, ki so na razpolažu, da oni imajo ogromno ne, in, in dolgo tradicijo in veliko zdravil. Mi smo šele na začetku, veliko se učimo od, 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 od področja onkologije in predvsem na ta naša sredstvenja tudi vabimo onkologe, da nam predstavijo svoje, svoje iz 